Rice is one of the major food crops in West Africa. At least 4 million hectares are under rice cultivation. And there are 20 million West African rice farmers. Most of them women. For one out of three people on the continent, food today means rice. Rice is no longer a cash crop, but increasingly a staple food for the urban and rural communities. Although rice is highly nutritious, a lot of the quality is lost during processing. This results in poor quality rice on the market. So the consumers turn to imported rice. In this video, you'll learn about parboiling, a way to improve the quality of rice by treating paddy with warm water and steam. But let us first look at some of the benefits of parboiling. Parboiled rice, if processed correctly, is free of impurities such as stones, dust, sticks and unfilled husks. This makes it easier to prepare and cook. Parboiled rice swells after cooking and it's tasty to eat. Most consumers prefer unbroken rice. By parboiling, you can reduce the breakage rate of rice. Most importantly, parboiled rice is more nutritious than non-parboiled rice. Different types of parboilers are available, of which these are just a few. Their capacity varies between 50 and 200 kilograms per batch, and they cost between 10 and 40 US dollars. But the principles of how they work are all the same. Now that you've learnt about the benefits of parboiling, Let's see how we actually parboil paddy rice. The following materials are needed for parboiling. Stove and cooking pan. Parboiler, clean water, firewood, tarpaulin, containers for washing, a clean stirrer, draining basket and scooper, and paddy rice. Now, let's get started. As we don't want any impurities in our rice, we begin by removing unwanted materials like stones, immature grains, dust, dirt and other grain seed. Pour the paddy into a container with water. Make sure the water covers the paddy. Wash and stir the paddy well, so that the lighter particles float. Remove any floating material from the top. Drain off the dirty water and add clean water. Wash and stir again. Remove more of the floating material. Repeat this action until there's no more floating material left. Now drain off half the water. Remove the paddy carefully out of the container, making sure the stones and dirt are left behind. The paddy is now ready to go into the cooking pan, which has been filled with water. Heat the paddy in the water.
stir from time to time. While heating, test the temperature of the water. Women in southern Benin use their fingers to test the temperature. When the water gets so warm they can no longer dip their fingers into it, they remove the cooking pan from the fire. It's important to make sure that the water does not boil or your paddy will be cooked. If you need to reuse the cooking pot, transfer the paddy and the hot water into a different container. Leave the paddy to cool overnight in the water and ensure it's covered with water throughout this period. After cooling, remove any floating material from the surface. Take the paddy out of the container and drain it in a basket. Now we're going to use the parboiler to steam the pre-soaked paddy. Place the cooking pan on the fire and partly fill it with water. Put the parboiler on top. It's important that the base of the parboiler does not touch the water. Let's listen to the chairperson of a rice processing group in southern Benin to learn why this is important. The base of the parboiler must not touch the water, otherwise water will enter in the parboiler and the rice will become a paste. Put the drained paddy in the parboiler. In this video, the women parboil only a small amount of paddy. If you're processing large quantities, make sure you leave some space at the top to allow the paddy to swell. Cover the paddy with a sack and put on the lid. Seal the space between the cooking pan and the parboiler with a piece of clean cloth to prevent the steam coming out of the cooking pan. After all, it's the steam that parboils the paddy. After steaming for about 30 minutes, check the paddy. You can tell that the paddy is ready when most of the husks on top are opened. We check the paddy from time to time. When the steam is being coming out for some time, we open the lid and take off the sacks. If we see that some of the paddy is open, we are sure the paddy is ready and remove it for drying. Now carefully remove the paddy from the parboiler. The paddy must now be dried. A concrete floor, tarpaulin or any clean surface ensures that the parboiled paddy will not be contaminated. Avoid drying the paddy in the hot sun for too long as the grain may crack as happens with clay or earthen pots that dry too fast. Continue drying in the shade on a tarpaulin. Turn the paddy over from time to time. Women in many countries have developed their own way to test whether the paddy is dry enough for storage or milling. Millers are very happy to mill carefully parboiled rice because it doesn't contain stones, unfilled grains and other impurities. And another benefit of parboiling is that the number of broken grains will be lower. Let's listen to the opinion of some people who are familiar with parboiling. 
Parboiled rice is better because it doesn't break and it's nice to see. I like to milk parboiled rice. We observe that parboiled rice does not break when milled. There's no flour and that's good. Parboiled rice swells when cooked. It swells better than the ordinary rice that we usually eat. There are many good reasons for parboiling rice. The market for quality rice is growing. Food vendors and restaurant owners start to use parboiled rice because it's already clean and easy to cook. People enjoy cooking parboiled rice because they spend little or no time cleaning the rice. Very few of the grains are broken and it's more nutritious for the whole family. <laughs>